what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OTB here on 104.5 ESPN. And right now, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome in the head man of LSU football and what is our first live interview with Coach Brian Kelly here on OTB. Coach Kelly, what's going on, man? Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. I didn't know it was my first live interview on OTB. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm I'm gonna. That's gonna go on my my trophy shelf. Yeah, yeah it should. Uh, I, I, I got to do that, no doubt. Uh, well, speaking of, did you manage to get another trophy or trophy shelf at the Zurich Classic Pro Am yesterday? I saw you getting to play with uh, Ben Taylor. How'd you hit it? First of all, what a guy! Uh, Ben's awesome, dude. Uh, great to play with. I had a great group uh, representing uh, Hancock Whitney, uh, so it was great to get out there. Uh, the only thing with pro ams, as you know, is they're a little long, um, <laughs> so uh, it uh, it gets a little long, but. Great group of guys. And again, Ben Taylor was a great pro and, uh, you know, really pulling for him. You know, he's in the top 50 FedEx points. So representing, you know, LSU, uh, we got a couple of guys out on the tour right now doing pretty good things. Now, Coach, there was a video of a putt that you made, and it was one that looked long and distinguished. How long was the actual putt that I saw go viral a little bit on the Internet? Yeah, I, I, it was pretty long, but those are my typical putts. I, I don't get anything close to the hole, so <laughs> I've got to be really good at those 60-footers because that's about as close as I get to the hole. Remember now, anything that really is close to the hole can't be me because then uh, everybody would be wondering about what am I doing with my, my real job. Fair. Uh, so as long as those long putts go in uh, – yeah, everybody feels pretty secure that I'm I'm doing my job as the football coach. Well, uh, it's kind of interesting, Coach, uh, because you you mentioned your real job, and here we start the interview talking about the program, and it's because it has been um, kind of shockingly quiet around here as of late. I just mean in terms of the football news cycle, right? It's I like it. it. Yeah, okay, I was about to ask you the exact thing. It feels very steady as it goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, from our perspective, I would love it if you could drum up a little more drama for us. Uh, but from a coaching perspective, is that a good thing? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, part of, you know, running a, a program that uh, is consistent and successful is that you've got to be doing things right, both on and off the field and, and not bringing any embarrassment to your program. So during these times right now, in particular, where, you know, there's not a lot of signing and recruiting, though the portal just opened up uh, on Sunday. Uh, you know, you really should be focused on, you know, player development, guys going to class, uh, working towards their, their degree. And, and, you know, obviously spring ball is about that technical and tactical development. So this should be a quiet time. If this is a busy time and a, and a, and a newsworthy time, um, you know, there's, uh, there's, there should be uh, some, some cause for concern. Coach, obviously you've been doing this for a long time, but you know, college football, college athletics is changing and spring practice has probably changed a little bit for you. How different is it? Do you view it differently now? Because you're going to have new players coming in from the portal. You're going to have a portal window that's open now. So do you kind of view it in a different way than you've done it in the years past? Well, I think each program has brought different challenges uh, in the spring. I, I think when your program is developed over a longer period of time, you know, I think you look at each spring differently. In other words, you know, I think if you're, you know, four, five, six years into it, you're looking at, you know, bringing your young players along, uh, giving them much more opportunity uh, relative to reps. Um, with us, you know, we're still putting in another coat of paint on the development of this program, so to speak. And Again, we had to tap into the portal pretty deep and brought in a lot of freshmen at mid-year. Yeah. So, you know, laying that down again is, has been really important to us. We don't want to skip the process with these players that have just been brought in that are going to play significant roles for us. And again, on defense in particular, uh, we've had to really focus in on, you know, our process again, like we did last spring. So, there's a lot of similar, um, you know, tenants to what we're doing this spring, uh, but we're obviously further ahead 
but but we can't get too far ahead of ourselves, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it, 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 there's so many variables, so many things at play. And imagine it takes years and years of baking before you kind of feel like you're fully solidified there. Uh, one of the more interesting changes, Coach said, I don't know. I, I don't know how like highly publicized it was. And to be honest, I don't quite know the technicalities of the rule changes specifically, but I do know that analysts now can have more of an on-field role, right? And it feels like um, there's just so much change with college football and you're, you're constantly having to adjust to try to stay ahead of that curve. Um, and, and you all have kind of done that with how you're approaching special teams. It sounds like doing a bit differently uh, this spring. How has it changed your approach now that you can get some of these minds that before had to be kind of hidden in the building that you can get them out on the field helping out? Yeah, it's been it's been a subtle change. They've kind of rolled it back a little bit, uh, T. Bob. That they were first, I think, inclined to let the analyst coach, and and I think what they've done is they've kind of rolled that back and rescinded mm. it in a sense that they're not ready to kind of go down that road yet because they're not sure how to navigate it at the smaller levels yet. So, yeah. what what you're going to get with the analyst is subject suggesting um, certain things to the, the full-time coaches, which as we all know, that's akin to the bump, right? I mean, it, it's, it's unregulated from that perspective. So um, I think what you're going to get really is, is the analysts are still going to continue to, to have input, but, but it's going to be uh, certainly much more um, from, from behind the scenes. Okay. So it actually, I, I, I did it wrong. So it still is. They still are kind of being forced behind the scenes. Then. Yeah. And I don't, I don't say you're wrong. I think what they've done is just the last couple of weeks, they're starting to roll that back. Mm. I think that they originally were going to let the analysts uh, have much more of a uh, impactful role. Uh, but they want to table that for further consideration. So they know how, uh, to enact it at all levels. I think what they're concerned about is, you know, coaches jumping out of the one double A division two level to be analyst in division one, and then there'd be a void of coaches everywhere. So I think you're going to see that happening, but it's, it's going to be, I think, uh, a little bit further down the road before that actually happens as it relates to us in special teams. Uh, what I was looking for is another defensive position. And, and a position coach that had the ability to coach the outside linebacker, or for us in our scheme of things, the Jack backer. We wanted to pull that position away from the defensive line mm. because that Jack backer is dropping in coverage. He's doing unique things. And, you know, when, when you're dealing with that front, you know, that's a lot of different angles. And we don't have both an inside linebacker and an outside linebacker coach you know, we just had our defensive coordinator and he was the inside linebacker coach. So adding a special teams coach in John Jancic, who's been a coordinator, um, who understands the the pieces that you have to put together uh, in special teams. And we're going to team coach it. You know, we're going to have Matt House is going to be involved in all aspects of kickoff, kickoff coverage. You know, Mike Dembrock is going to be involved in kickoff return. Um you know, Brad Davis has got field goal PAT. Yep. So it's going to be a team approach. All coaches are on on duty relative to special teams. And then we get Jancic, who now, you know, will coordinate it um, with Lester Erb, who is on staff and and really is the brains behind it. And then we get an outside linebacker coach. I know that's a long narrative, but that's kind of the answer to the to the question. Coach, last year, I loved the approach to the transfer portal for you, bringing in a lot of players that had ties to the state of Louisiana, and those players actually stood up and stood tall for the program, played really well. What was maybe the approach this offseason? Because I look at a guy like Omar Spates, and when I'm covering Oregon State, I'm going to be honest, when he went to the portal, I was like, maybe, hopefully, somehow, some way, let LSU have my purple and gold goggles on, let them talk to him. But I didn't know that he had a tie LSU. I mean, that is a real deal Holyfield right there in the middle of your defense. So what has the approach been in the portal this year? You know, I think it starts with, um, you know, understanding, you know, our uh, values, uh, our program, um, you know, clearly, you know, culture uh, first over uh, the player and, and they've got to fit what we do here. Um, you know, I, I, I made it clear that, uh, you know, these players that 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 are in the portal, 
um, we have to vet out and understand why they're in the portal. Uh, if, if they're in the portal because they've been, you know, uh, forced out of their existing program, then we better know about it. Is there an injury uh, that, that that's being masked? Uh, is, the, is there an issue with uh, their academics? Is there an issue with uh, them in the locker room? We better find out what the issues are. With Omar Spate, there was none of that. Uh, he wanted to get into uh, a primetime location. He wanted to play on Broadway. You know, he yeah, wanted the yeah. bright lights, and uh, and and he knew he could get it getting away from the Pac-12. And uh, you know, so we had a guy there who's been amazing, by the way. Uh, his leadership skills, the way he handles himself, uh, the professionalism that he brings every single day has just brought up the entire group. He's a special kid. Well, and uh, we're talking to LSU head football coach Brian Kelly here on OTB, and uh, I, you know it's it's impossible to do one of these things and and not talk quarterback and Jaden Daniels. We, I mean, we were talking about a coach. I don't know the last time that LSU had a quarterback that was considered to be top ten in the country entering the season. I mean, it's been forever. Like even Burrow, there was no expectation right. that he was going to be top ten. That expectation is there with Jaden Daniels. If you look at all lists and everything, and if you look at last year, one of my favorite moments of last year was you kind of challenging him. Look, you know, we, we can engage in a bit more risk. I know you don't want to make mistakes, but we can engage that. What have you seen out of the growth of Jaden Daniels now? He's been in this system for a year. It's easily the best structured environment that he's ever been in. He has the same coordinator. He has another year with the weapons. Um, where are your expectations at for Jaden Daniels come fall? Uh, I mean, I think he could be the best quarterback in the country. There's no doubt. I mean, what what he's exhibited this spring has been, um, you know, for me, just a comfort level within the offense, uh, the ability to want now to stretch the offense down the field, uh, and and then the leadership component, which wasn't there last year because he was he was more worried about finding his own space and and finding his own way here at LSU. So. Now you combine all those other aspects and you you just have a player now that's on the verge of of being, you know, uh, in that category of, of greatness. And uh, that that's anybody understands college football knows that if you've got a quarterback that can play at that level, you've got a chance to play for a championship. Coach, I know you mentioned putting another layer of paint on this team, and every year is going to be different. There's going to be different challenges with every team, but I, I covered that Texas Bowl. You were at that Texas Bowl right after you take the job, and LSU yeah. barely has enough players to play, and so you go into that spring last year. Like, How does it feel this year? Even though this is not a finished product, I know that. How does it feel this year heading into spring, getting ready for the spring game compared to where you were a year ago? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good question uh, because we had it posed to uh, uh, the staff the other day, and and that is uh, we're in a really good position provided we continue to uh, develop the traits of this football team, and I, I think there's some talent uh, that we didn't have in certain areas, uh, but it's got to be developed, and and that's on us. Uh, we got to do a really good job of coaching this football team. If, if we if we back off at all um, from from what we do in, in our process, then then that's on us. If, if we do a really good job of sticking with our process and 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 really developing the traits of this football team, um, we got a chance to be pretty good. Uh, speaking of being pretty good, the LSU women's basketball team, pretty damn good. Taking home the natty. Uh, any extra pressure being applied from Coach Mulkey now? Coach, I mean, Listen, send a pretty just high having bar. Around, Mulkey around is pressure. <laughs> I mean, it, she didn't even have to win a game, and there's pressure. She, just the way she handles herself, the way she does her job every day, you know, that's the great part about it, right? Look, uh, we are so excited and proud of of what the women's basketball team has accomplished and in, in winning a national championship in year two. But even if they didn't. Uh, what, what they have accomplished and, yeah. and what she's accomplished in developing that program uh, in such a short period of time sets a bar, right? I mean, yeah. it sets a bar in terms of how you want to set the standards here for everything, whether it's what Jay's doing in baseball, what we're doing in track and field, you know, we, you know what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis in golf, our, our men's and women's golf teams. I mean, yeah. across the board, 
LSU sports is about excellence. And uh, so you feel that, right? And, and so every single day, you know where the bar is when it comes to LSU athletics. All right, Coach, so they always talk about the NFL being a copycat league, college football maybe being a copycat league. I'm watching North Dakota State the other day, and they had 41 personnel on the field. Wow. One running back, three fullbacks, and a tight end. Look, you know me, I'm always you know too gritty to be pretty, trying to champion for the fullback. Can we get that maybe one play in the spring game? Do we have three fullbacks think, that no. we can put out no. there on the field? I don't think there we are. do. We what? actually do. You're gonna, yeah, it, we should have invited you the time we put in our direct snap offense. Uh, what was that? That was last, uh, I think it was Friday or Saturday last week. We ran all direct snap handoff. Uh, in goal line. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You, I don't know why you didn't get a personal invitation. Oh. Coach, be still um, my beating heart. I love it. T-Bob's an old lineman too. He loves that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Hell too, yeah. So. No, I just, look, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm an honest friend and Jake kind of refuses to accept the, that fullbacks have become a vestigial organ in a lot of ways, right? They, 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 they're a dinosaur. <laughs> um, but hey, but you know, there are the North Dakota states. Look, Mason Taylor can play fullback, right? It's, you know, it's not that much different. Uh, they just have a new name now. They're called H backs, yeah. right? They're, you know, they're they're really just much more versatile because, as we know, they're the best athletes on the yep. team. So yep. now they can just play multiple positions. Yep, yeah. clip that, put it on all social. Say, you heard Coach Kelly say it right there. I expected the brown nosy go from this room to that room, not <laughs> the no, other I appreciate way around. It. Uh, Coach, last one here, man. Uh, what, what what's the shape of the spring game on Saturday for everybody thinking to come out and celebrate LSU football? Yeah, so I want to get some special teams in, uh, some kickoff, kickoff return. Uh, I want to do a little bit of our punt, punt return, field goal, extra point. We've got a battle at the at the the place kicker position. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of live scripted um, blue zone, which is you know again going back to to what we we're talking about, Jacob. Uh, we're going to run some goal line runs. Uh, I, it's hard sometimes in these scrimmages to to get into that. Those, those packages, you may not even get down there. So I want to get that stuff in because it's important for us. So we're going to script that to start, and then we're going to have an offense versus defensive scrimmage. Um, so there's a modified kind of point scoring system. But we'll get a scrimmage in, but I want to do some of that stuff early so mm -hmm. we can get that in and then we'll get to an offense versus defensive scrimmage situational football man uh it's the best coach brian kelly lsu head football coach coach kelly thank you so much i know you're incredibly busy man thanks for carving out some time for us this morning and uh enjoy this weekend it's gonna be great it will be thanks for having me on otv yes sir thanks, coach. there we go wow jake what incredible takes i mean those guys they're just the best uh i think so and if you think so again Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.